In this unit, we'll be looking at reflection. Reflection is what mirrors produce, but reflection is also produced by other surfaces other than mirrors. We see mirrors around us in our daily life. This unit will also look at refraction. Refraction is what allows lenses on cameras to operate, and the lens in the human eye is also operating on the principle of refraction. This is a silvered or smeared, roughly mirrored surface. This produces a diffuse reflection. A difference between a diffuse reflection and a specular reflection is a diffuse reflection. You can't see yourself in it, but you can see it does reflect light. Here it's reflecting sunlight. It's picking up the sunlight and then reflecting that sunlight as it dis as a diffuse blob, if you will, unfocused onto the wall. This is a diffuse reflection that we see here, produced by that particular piece of a rough, it's actually a kind of mylarized uh, aluminum coating on plastic, but it doesn't produce a sharp image. This is a mirror. It produces a specular reflection. Specular meaning that it is sharp, it is focused. You can use this as a mirror. It's what we think of when we say a mirror. Both of these surfaces actually reflect light. And they reflect light in much the same way. But the mirror is much smoother. And so we actually see a much clearer image of the world in the mirror. And we get this sharp specular reflection, this specular image, the one that's sharp the specular reflection as it's called. This is uh, two different surfaces but they both reflect. So here you can see them side by side. The one on the left is silvered but rough. It's still reflecting the same thing as the image on the right but you can't really see it clearly. What it's reflecting is this plant which can be seen up here. And the uh, angle at which the light hits that mirror on the right is the same as it comes off, so we see the plant uh, in a mirror reflection. Now, refraction looks a little different. Watch this black line. What I'm doing is I'm rotating a stack of glass panes from a louvered window. And as I move the glass panes, as I rotate them, I'm rotating them, the black line, which is one single black line, appears to break. The reason it appears to break is because of refraction. The glass is causing the light coming from the paper to bend, to not travel in a straight line. And that's why there's this broken appearance to the line. This is refraction, or a refraction effect. An effect of refraction, an effect of light being bent both as it enters the glass and as it leaves the glass, which actually moves the light over slightly. This happens because the speed of light in the glass is less than the speed of light in the air. There's a difference in speeds involved. But we can use this refractive effect. Well, take another impact. Of, take a look at another impact of this. There are two dimes. Which dime is closer, the one on the left or the one on the right? As you move your eye over them, the one on the left will appear to be slightly closer than the one on the right. This is an effect of refraction called apparent depth. The glass makes the dime on the left look closer. We'll look at apparent depth in the lab this week. One of the things we can use refraction for is images. Here's a window. There's a curved lens. It uses refraction to make an image of that, of what's seen outside the window. If you look very carefully, you might catch that the image on the wall being cast by the magnifying lens is upside down. Smooth puddles of water can create a specular reflection. In the water ahead, we can see a reflection of the sky in a cloud. If we look closer, we can actually see the mountains of Pompeii reflected in the puddle as well. That's a specular reflection. Specular ref reflections can make for very beautiful photographs, such as this picture of the lagoon. 
the clouds and the land are reflected in the smooth water of the lagoon. This is a specular reflection and has a certain beauty in it due to the symmetry that we see. We can also see refraction in the water around us if we look. Here, the bottom appears to be moving or wiggling, but we know that that's just the effect of the waves. But why does it appear to move? Because the surface of the water is not smooth. The angle with which the light is bent is changing, and it causes the bottom to appear to wiggle, to appear to move. We know that, but we probably don't realize that it is this effect of light bending that's causing that wiggling appearance. In fact, if you look closely, there's a couple things going on. One, the bottom is wiggling. Two, sometimes the wave forms a convex lens that concentrates the light and creates those bright lines on the bottom. One other effect around us is actually caused in part by refraction and in part by something called total internal reflection. And that's a rainbow. This is just a tiny piece of a rainbow in a cloud but you can see the colors. This is because the different frequencies of light, the different wavelengths, refract by different amounts. That is, their index of refraction is different for each wavelength. And so each color is actually bent by a different amount. In this case, two refractions and a total internal reflection are what creates the spectrum that we see from the sunlight that creates a small rainbow at the center of the image. But this is due to refraction an internal reflection and another refraction. And each time the different colors are bent by a different amount, it causes them to split apart into the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet we see.